I want to speak about the importance on retail, about personalization. Uh, the thing to take in consideration and to relate back into her presentations, I'm not sure whether you've seen that uh, on the web, but there is that video with people doing a race in a bike. And uh, there was that guy, they were all biking, cycling like crazy. And you see there was that guy who lay down on his bike, the feet on the air, and he was cruising at a fast pace. And it's a big difference between walking hard to go quick and that guy who walks smartly. So I will try to tweet that video at some point if you want to see it. It just, for me, that video was just funny, hilarious, and, and, and full of sense. So that's, that's for the uh, introductions, uh, the, the, um, the transitions from her presentation to, to mine. Uh, if you struggle with my accents, well, I cannot do anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> I will try to be a bit slowly. Uh, if we move on to the next slide. There you go. So I uh, have to speak about Salesforce, about the growth, uh, some compliance slide. Uh, but the, the truth is that it's still an important slide, though, that we have to cover. Uh, why Salesforce is important, and here is, a, is, is the, the pace of the growth of Salesforce. We passed the 10 billion mark revenues uh, this year. Uh, we, are, we are forecasting next year to meet the 12.5 billion, and that's a guidance, but we are closely, we are close to be there. Uh, what's going on in the world of Salesforce, really? We face four regional uh, industrial revolutions, and we are currently facing the revolutions of AI. Um, we all talk about what is the disruptive decade we are facing. Well, we face disruptive decade in retail. We've seen high retailers going very high, pushing the selling at, uh, at height we never dreamed and imagined it could be possible, like Amazon valuating at 1,000 trillion? 1 trillion? 1,000 trillion? Something like that? Yeah. Uh, just amazing. It's just amazing. Uh, we've seen that with Apple as well. We never thought those things could happen. But in the meantime, some company didn't work well. So I'm going to touch into that in a minute. But I uh, wanted to talk as well about the core value of Salesforce. Uh, um, for us, those core values are true and represent everything that we are doing, whether it is in marketing, in product, in customer service, in me presenting here. Uh, we talk about trust. It is very key and a core fundamental, which is very important. Uh, I just talked a few minutes ago about the importance of having some SLN, SOW, but the reality is that in our relationship that we have to have, we need to have some moment of truth and, and, and on top of those, some trust. Um, customer success, everything we do at Salesforce is for our customer. We want them to be successful. If they're not successful, we are not either. So uh, it's, a, it's a great, it's a mutual growth. Uh, we drive innovation all the time, so we promise to have every single time innovations that we serve our customers. We have this innovation spirit. And, and, and Salesforce, and you may have seen a lot of content about it, about our equality that we have uh, in the company. We try, we try to influence the societies as well to draw more equality, for instance, to bring uh, to the, the pay gap between, uh, and the gen gender pay gap very, very close. So Salesforce invests in millions to do that internally and Ad is a strong advocate to, uh, to do that in, in, in all society. Great, let's talk about retail now. Uh, so retail, uh, we have a shopping index uh, based on half a billion or monthly orders. So the shopping index, so we have a commerce cloud solution. So my background uh, initially at Salesforce was from the retail side and recently I've taken more that content strategy side across cross platform. Um, on the retail side, think about, we know the main, the, main, the main top players. We have Amazon, Alibaba, we have Walmart in terms of volume. Well, we have us after what? We don't see that because we manage uh, a lot of websites under different names, uh, such as Adidas, Lacoste, and the like. And um, we, we are helping in the own our platform and new drive solutions for them. That gives us a strong privilege and strong benefit for us to be able to get some insights about the true pulse of our customer. So those data was pulled for about Q2, and we're about to release Q3 now, uh, insights. That's just amazing. We are, we are capable to get those data out very quickly. 
So here is some insight and some sneak peek about what's going on in the world. And I'll give you here some breakdown about what's going on in some key markets across Europe. The key trend that we are facing is basically mobile. Mobile drive the way, mobile drive the pace. Uh, that, that is, uh, I will tweet about it later on, 71% of people who go in store compare price and products on their mobile phone. If you do not have a mobile first strategy, that was true uh, two years ago, uh, today you are late because you have competition that came in. <coughs> We've seen comp uh, com brand and retailers that are very successful. Let's talk a bit about all those retailers that we are leader on their category that went burst. Um, we've seen Toys R Us, uh, Fraser Hart has an issue, we, we've seen Debenhams has an issue. So that's all retailers that I will never imagine those guys being in trouble. At the top of all, we've seen big retailers being disrupted, especially on the grocery industry, that they're trying to do some merging acquisitions. So we've seen that Amazon buy bought Whole Food. Carrefour, big French retailer, European retailers, spent billions for their digital transformations. And one of the outcomes they decided to, to move forward, that was announced a month ago, that they wanted to partner with Tesco to drive that digital transformations. Uh, and, and Tesco desperately need that. Um, we've seen, oops, Debenhams as well. Um, that big amazing acquisition that we've seen about Asda and Sensory is just huge. It's just important. What it is that drive that? Why is it important? Well, hear, hear me out. The leader of today might be in trouble next year. Nothing has to be taken as granted. If we do not take the right decision, if we are not prepared for the futures, we are likely to be behind. If you are not speaking to the audience in, in the right manner, someone else will do and will take the lead. And change happened faster than it used to be years ago. So, we talk about uh, mobile growth. Search usage is very important to be able for the retailer to have a search box that will enable uh, user to have uh, search recommendation or to find a product that is very key, very important. Not all the retailer does that at the moment. And that's why, uh, even though the, the growth is, is, is flat on that, you see even percent of the year in your revenue. We talk about mobile traffic. Now, um, I haven't put that here yet, but social media player being impact on that. Uh, have, you, have you seen the announcement from Instagram and from uh, Snapchat who wants to open up their platform to the retailers. That, that announcement came in, that would be a huge revenue generator. Now, we do not know how much what would be the intent of that, but we spent time on mobile phone, we spent time on Snapchat and Instagram, we fed, or brand fed influencers to promote their brand on their image and their videos. What would be the platform that we're going to like? Those platforms will definitely disrupt the retail industry as we know, will definitely give uh, our time for Amazon uh, and the other uh, retailers, how are we going to be ready? Facebook is as well on the radar. They try to do that. They're currently A-B testing different solutions as well. Social media, social media drive a big revenues into the mix. That's something we shouldn't ignore. All right. Uh, before I carry on, if you have any questions, raise your hand. Do not wait for the end. I'm happy to have some dual conversations. I've taken some notes for the previous presentation that I felt I should have asked earlier. So if you have any question, just raise your hand, okay? Great. So we are facing a shopper crisis, and I want you to add at the top of it, at the top of it, from a content perspective, we are as well facing that. Uh, so let's talk first about the shopper crisis, and I'm going to touch basically about content. It is very important that we bring that mobile experience in a homogeneous manner with that experience that we bring in the store. It's key from downtown. How many retailers we know they are not connecting their mobile platform with their store platform? I'm going to give you a simple example. I want to buy something on store. That product is not available, but I love it. I've seen all the reviews on my mobile while I was browsing in that store. Can I get it? 
you see some retailers that are very smart and they say, don't worry, we don't have it, but we'll get it delivered to your place. Just fantastic. We want the user, want, the shoppers want to have a shopper, shopper first approach. So what does it mean to be shopper first approach? So we have a report of that. I will tweet as well uh, 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 again about it if you're really interested to deep dive on that. But think about how the brand used to operate a few years ago. They used to be product oriented. So you have a product, you put it on your platform, and the user have to come in and adapt to the platform to get what, whatever they want. Queuing and all the like, and reading all the features that they like, but there is nothing personalized to themselves. Shopper first approach means I'm going to provide an experience that suits the shoppers. You need to know who is he, who is he, he, her. Um, that's the shopper approach that we need to understand. Your gather data every single time they, they buy from them and they come back to you. We need to be able to leverage those data as well. And what are demanding from that? I want advertising to be personalized to my need. It's very, very important. And I'm still at the very early stage of my, of my uh, shopping journey. I'm looking for a microwave at the moment. I have no idea which one to get. If I search for microwave, I'm expecting some for the top brand to come back to me and say, hey, there is this nice offer at the moment. Look into us. Why not? Great. Content. We've seen the last 10, seven years, the age of content, content is king, right? The result, we have a ton of content out there. We reach the age of, pardon me for that, content crap. I have so much content. Which one is good, which one is doesn't, is doesn't good. So I will fill up a form, or I will consume the content on my mobile phone, and I will be so desperate that I spend 10 minutes of my life reading a content which is really poor. I'm not coming back into that. So we face a race to get the as, as, as fast as possible content out that sometimes is not the right content that we want. The content marketing has been disrupted as we speak. We definitely need to make sure that we incorporate the personalization sphere of content uh, in the content strategy that we want to apply. All right, so quickly about Salesforce, what we are doing on the commerce cloud side. So we offer Einstein, which is artificial intelligence across the entire shopper journey, from marketing and acquisitions and advertising, through e-commerce with all the product recommendations, through service. Yeah, you may have bought the product which doesn't suit you for size or whatever other reason. You need to, maybe faulty, you need to deal with your, your, your brand, uh, your preferred brand uh, in the right manner. And, um, how you manage your staff as a retailer to be able to go through that digital transformation. We've seen many brands who try to introduce tablets and different apps to engage in a new manner with the user. Some people are not used to that, they're not tech savvy. So what that training, what that platform that you're offering them? The retailer becomes smarter, the consumer, the shopper retail, uh, becomes smarter. We need to help them to face that, that transformation. Personalization is key. Having that shopper first approach is very important. Now, fasten your seat belt, sit back and relax. Let's see some data on what's the impact on personalizations on that retail. Right. It should get 7% of visit, but you have out of it 24% of orders. You haven't done anything. You just implemented AI to your Platform, you have a shopper first platform, 24% of your order. Think about the revenue you're generating. You haven't increased your staff by much. 26% of revenues. That's what we've seen out of all the surveys that we have of half billion uh, shoppers. Now we have 19% who are likely to return into the website. They haven't shopped, they came in, but they are not wasted. They get that personalized experience. They know I'm going, I'm going to get back and find what I'm looking for here. Right. Um, I 
AI is still a relatively new technology today. It's very important to take that into, into consideration. So how are we going to help the brand to be prepared and to be able to prepare uh, to the next, to the future? At the top of all, what content through that journey we will be able to sell and to target, to categorize in the right manner? And I'm going to throw a question out of the air here. Can we use AI in context management? I don't have the answer yet. I'm, I have a small a, a beginning of, of it. The truth is that um, AI can help content to be safe for the basic things. So we've seen, for instance, FAQ. So you have a search box, so you start to type, and you have a set of contents that come to your need, or chat box that's so key and so important. That's a big description for the content management. So that's very key, very important. What the different categories and portfolio are preparing to the infrastructure in the background to be able to provide content that will serve those chat box. Now, I'm conscious of time here. So, I wanted to give you an example, <coughs> a true example. And um, so, here's the question Does the content marketer have to rely solely on AI moving forward? So, I want to take the example of Decathlon. And Decathlon, they are not a Salesforce customer for that specific product. So, I wanted to be clear. I think I'm neutral here. All right? Uh, so, say Decathlon, they are growing like crazy. You've seen their shop opening all over the place, all over Europe, all over Africa. That brand is just doing, is just doing great. And their content marketing teams, just follow them, even though you don't like the brand, what they are doing is just at another level. So that's French one. And they said, they've launched something and they wanted to engage with their audience and say, hey, you know what? We found an old catalog from 1985. Great, that's fantastic. Um, Give us, an, uh, uh, give us your view. And they point out Camino TV for some reason. Right away, that post, so you never trigger, you, we think about campaign management and all my KPI and so on. That thing was more effective than any campaign and cost nearly nothing. So here's the results. It's booming, it's buzzing all over the place, it became trending. And what you see, you can say, all right, so what they've done and what they decided to do is that because people love this catalog and that product and that catalog, the product team gets involved and they say, you know what? We're going to reissue that catalog and that product. They started with content. And now they're developing the product for that. And it became a campaign. So now, if you follow them, they're currently communicating of the trend and the pace that they are going. So we talked about speed a minute ago. So they created on the same day, Later on on that day, they have announced that they are going to produce that catalog in their magazine. Think about your organization structure that you will have to be able to take that decision. So we all been through that. We have some content, we have the service ticket, it has to be privatized, it has to be vetted, we need to have this purchase order, this budget, da 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 It takes two weeks, you haven't done anything. They've <laughs> done something in two hours. And now they said, look at the pictures of the guy. He's currently building and designing that product that will go into productions. That's just amazing. That was target, started with contents that become a marketing campaign and that will become a new product that people will buy. They even went further into the, local, the, the personalization process. Hey guys, I know you're interested about this product. Give us your size. What's your size you want? Never saw that before, and they've done it. I love that. They get a survey on Twitter, and they know that most of the people will want M, L, and S, roughly. So they know roughly what quantities they have, they have to have. That's a campaign stunt. So they are not going to have millions or hundreds of thousands of those stuff to be available. They are going to release that, make sure it's going to be accessible on their e-commerce platform, and they're going to sell it. And now I follow those guys, and I want to look at how that story is going to be ending. Content did that. That content marketer is just a genius. How you can implement that culture and that spirit in the B2B spheres with all the content marketers? That would be a part of the conversation, uh, another session. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, I can stay here for a good uh, two hours again. Uh, thank you very much.